So, how about some sample combat demonstrations? Finally. I'm going to pull back up the fight with the angry tree friends from the sample playthrough video, as it does a good job of demonstrating a tactic I like to call the shield sandwich. The overall goal of this is to have most, if not all, of the active enemy team all together on the board like this, with the two party members on each side having high shield values so as to negate the entire enemy team's damage. Or, if you don't have enough people with shielding to pull that off, you can substitute high hit points to absorb the blows. And the person on the right side of the sandwich can also get the job done with a lot of leech, though I didn't have my child Wraith yet at this point. So this screenshot is the result, but how to get there? Let's go back to the beginning of the fight. The key elements to use this strategy is to have a few people with good shielding, as well as several people with first action to move your team up to the front. The more first action the better, I mean, I only have two people here capable of using it, and I'm only going to actually use one, but with only seven total enemy cards, that will be enough to demonstrate. Other than shielding and first action, it helps to have some people with first strike, counter, or cleave. First strike, just because it's great. Cleave, because moving a cleaver to the front of the line can sometimes take out multiple foes. And counter, because it gets rid of some of the board. At the start of the fight, if the enemy goes first, that's fine. If you do, then either put out a high shield individual, or as I'm about to do here, a high damage individual with the intent to buff his shield with one of the supporters later. Then, over the course of the fight, as long as the enemy has people yet to play, your plan is to put out exactly the number of attack individuals as you have the ability to use first action on. You don't have to use the first action ability yet. In fact, I recommend using your other card plays to fire off counter actions to reduce the number of enemies in the combat area. Once the enemy is out of any possible tactical card play, because the worst thing to happen to this strategy is to have the enemy use their own first action moves, then you can proceed to push your guys in the middle of the pack up to the front of the line. And once every single enemy is played, and you've used your first action to get your unshielded damage dealers out of the way, use any shield ally buffs so that they land on the guy acting as the top slice of the shield sandwich. Lastly, put the bottom slice of the shield sandwich on the board, buff his shielding as desired, and then throw the rest of your attackers in after him. In the early parts of this strategy, it's more important to get your people into position on the other side of the shield guy, so focus on that. But once you're at the end, you can worry more about min-maxing the damage done to kill as many cards as possible from the back end. And there you have it, the shield sandwich. Postscript note, my apologies if the phrases first strike and first action were confusing to anyone, since they sound similar but mean different things. I probably should have replaced the phrase first strike with Pierce. Where's that derp face I keep using? Next up, a strategy with many names, but I prefer to call it the Ailment Alpha Assault, and it focuses on using a lot of first strike to edge out extra damage, as well as aid to the positioning of your forces on the battle line. This strategy can be quite potent, to the point that I've seen players who advocate this being the only correct strategy. I don't go that far, but I also can't ignore the potential, so I'll certainly be demonstrating it here. First up is a bit of preparation. In both the overworld map and the build menu, aka the tech tree, you need to have access to dark wood, as well as a source of either metal, bone, or certain stone. You also need to be able to craft pikes. In theory, you can also do this with staves, just in case you don't have access to metal, bone, or stone, but staves are far less powerful. So that means four skill points need to be dropped right at the start of the game. Prepare accordingly. The good news is, once you are well on your way to making these dark wood spears, you should be getting pretty good research experience, so you can then branch out and get whatever else you need. Equip everyone you have with these weapons, and that's it. Preparation over. I'll go through my party here, so feel free to pause the video if you want to see the details of my characters. I've gotten my force a fair amount of power behind it now. Everyone has a Darkwood Spear equipped, save for the people who cannot use a weapon, and the large deer aficionado. 
Elves get first strike by default, so I gave him a high damage two-handed axe. Now just to be fair in my demonstration of this tactic, I'm going to take this potent party and give them a fight worthy of their level. A five skull battle with rock trolls. So what makes this so effective? First, let's play out the fight a bit. The enemy even gets to go first, although for this tactic that's usually a good thing. 82 HP, 48 cleave damage. That seems painful. I'll respond with my dwarf and Blauslav here. Then they confuse Blauslav, and I'm going to pause the battle for a sec. Let's check the state of the board at this very moment. That troll's 82 hit points have been knocked down to 50. Blauslav may be confused, but the dwarf isn't, and he's looking to do 45 damage to the troll. And that is why this strategy isn't just about spears, but specifically about the Darkwood Spear. All Darkwood Spears come with 3 poison damage on them. Poison damage does double against foes that are already missing hit points, which the troll is, since he took damage by virtue of me hitting him with a first strike. So the Dwarf Bandit's attack will be doing 45 damage instead of 42. Or, said another way, people with first strike can provide their own damage to trigger the poison bonus. That isn't enough to finish the troll, the confusion play saw to that, but then again, I have an army of people with first strike, so I'll just Morogniev his hit points down below the 45 threshold. The enemy has two big, tough rock trolls this fight. One is now set up to die before he can attack, and the other is sitting in the discard pile. If the second troll had been played to the board instead of using the confusion tactic, then I'd have to deal with him. But, Blau Slav also wouldn't be confused, so the first troll would already be dead, instead of me having to use a third character to guarantee it. I'll now let the battle play out the rest of the way, and you can all watch as I pre-stab the heck out of what should be a really tough fight. You can also see that my support line, who normally can't attack until the second round, gets in bonus damage by virtue of their first strikes. I'll get in a couple tactical moves as well, but really this is all about the alpha damage. Fight over, flawless victory. One other big benefit to this tactic is that Darkwood is an early mid-tier material, meaning you can pull this off fairly quickly. However, as the late game approaches, you can swap out instead to spears made of Ancient Wood, which are about twice as powerful as the Darkwood ones and have 8 poison damage. So this tactic can be used throughout an entire playthrough. The biggest downside to this tactic is that if everyone is using both hands to wield a spear, that means far less defense to go around. 
Not a big issue if you kill everyone before they can hit you, but if you fight opponents that have their own first strikes, then you're really going to miss having a guy with high shielding around. The second biggest downside is, pikes only give first strike in direct fights. If you are doing a lot of other challenges, then you'll much rather be using gear made with gems so that you have a lot of other bonuses to your stats that pikes cannot provide. Personally, I like having about half of my army wield spears. I find it a good blend with other functionality. Warriors with two-handed swords and shields, a couple cleavers, a couple of my lower strength guys geared with tactical stat boosting items. Still, it's hard to argue with first strike. So that was two full fights. How about a couple other tips to round out the combat video? Let's head back to my town where my B team is sitting. I want to draw your attention to the first character in this list. His name is Hulking Rat. At least it was until 10 seconds later when his name is now temporary. This being a roguelite game, you have two choices. Save scum or accept that you will sometimes lose your people. It isn't a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and more importantly, how. The most likely way you will lose a character is in a direct combat, where someone unfortunately eats far too much damage. Maybe you took a fight that was too hard, maybe an enemy support liner countered your key character and then gave first action to their ancient dragon. Things can happen. Having a character who is your designated sacrificial rat can minimize how much of a setback the death causes you. Low tier beasts make good choices due to how easy they are to get, and if those aren't available, take whoever your weakest human is and use them. Gatherers and crafters come to mind, especially ones that just recently joined you and or grew up without the town building that gave them bonus starting stats. Another tip is to make sure that you get as much out of each of your characters as possible. From a standpoint of combat, this means giving them gear that allows them to do, well, anything in combat. For high strength people, this is easy enough. Give them a big weapon, some heavy armor, and let them go to town. For lower strength individuals though, it's a lot tougher, what with the whole not being able to wear much issue. You could go with the option of just giving everyone a darkwood spear, of course. Or you could go with what I call the counter all option. It does require a gemstone source, mind you, and in the tech tree, you will want to probably get up to at least Malachite, as the bonus effect and weight reduction of Amber is fairly minimal. But one-handed swords, shields, and light armors made with gems can get pretty low on the poundage and have a wide variety of additional effects on them. If you make them in bulk, some will be just what you want including skills that include counter offense and counter tactic, like Smacko's shirt here with three traps on it. In other words, I call it counter all because the weaker members wearing this specific set of gear can augment just about everything but damage, meaning they are powerhouses from the support line, and if they happen to end up on the front line instead, they are still high in the shielding column. I'll go over it a bit more in an upcoming strategy video on gear selection. So, I'll end this one here. Until next time, here's Mr. Poppers.